everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you came to hang out with me for a little while. My name is Dina. I'm a Catholic wife and mother, homeschool teacher, and homemaker. In today's video, I'm going to share with you ways to raise a cradle Catholic. This video is a collaboration video with several other incredible Catholic women here on YouTube. I'm going to link their channels below, and I hope after you watch my video, you'll go over to their channels and check theirs out. started with first what is a cradle Catholic and how do I raise one a cradle Catholic to me is a baby that is baptized into the church basically from the time that they are in a cradle they're Catholic and they're raised that way hopefully a lot of people being Catholic is more of a cultural thing you just hit the milestones but it's the in-between that we're here to talk about today anybody can go and have a baby baptized come back for First Holy Communion, confirmation, maybe they get married in the church, but there's nothing in between. And then the sacraments don't hold the same power. They don't hold the same meaning as if they understand why. If being Catholic is just to the heart of who they are as a person. And that, I hope, as parents, is what we wanna to gift to our children. In today's video, let's talk about different ways that you can have a child that isn't just sacramentalized, but really catechized, they understand what it means to be Catholic, and they're on fire for the faith because they see it in you. You can send your child to Catholic school, you can send them to CCD, you can even have them go to Life Teen or any other type of Catholic program, send them to Steubenville, wherever. But if they don't see what it means to be Catholic displayed to them in their home, in their family, between their parents, it's gonna just ring hollow. It doesn't mean anything. Dropping your child off at mass just so they can get the bulletin signed, so they can get something checked off, so they can go through their next sacrament. Why would you do that? Why would you put your child in a class and the faith doesn't mean anything to you? So I'm hoping if you're watching this video, you're the type of parent who you wanna give them everything. Maybe you're a cradle Catholic and you were not raised well in the faith. Well, in 2019, there's no excuse. There's so much information. There are endless resources to equip us as parents to give our children the best of everything. And the best doesn't mean monetary. The best doesn't mean the most expensive school. It doesn't mean vacations around the world. That doesn't matter. What matters is handing on the faith to your children so that they will have something to sustain them when they leave your home. That's what you want. You want them to be able to cling to the church, cling to Christ, because they have a firm foundation. Sadly, I didn't get that. That was not my story. Yes, I was a cradle Catholic, but I was not brought up in the church. It didn't mean anything to me. It was just something that I said that I was, but it didn't mean that I had any idea what it meant to be Catholic. And I wanted my kids to have better. My husband's also a cradle Catholic and his story, which we'll share in a different video, completely different from mine, but he also veered off from the faith. So we have two different stories, two different parents who came from very different ways of being raised as Catholics. We both veered away from the church. We never formally left the church, but we were probably the most horrible example of what a Catholic should be that there is. We changed that and our kids have been raised that way. And I hope and I pray with everything that's in me that my kids will stay in the church. They will stay rooted in the church and they will cling to Christ throughout their life because of the example that we gave them. Now, please don't get this twisted. I'm not saying that we have Gregorian chants playing through my home and we're praying the rosary you know, three times a day and we're doing the liturgy of the hours and it, it is not like that. This is a real family. We have real issues, real fights, real things to contend with, but we prioritize the faith. And that's what I'm hoping to convey to you that maybe something that I'll say here will ring true to you and it will be something that you can incorporate in your family to really ground your children because we can't make the mistake, and I know that this was the case, not so much for my parents, but for my husband's story. He was in Catholic school, 
and his parents assumed that he was being taught the things that he should have been taught. My parents kind of, it, it wasn't a priority to them, so obviously nobody was teaching me, and it just wasn't anything that was even on their radar. So everything that I know, I know through my husband and things that I've done on my own. But we wanted to provide our children a different story than what we had. You know what they say, when you know better, you do better. Now, we had our kids in Catholic school, and for some people, I think that that might be where they think that, okay, well, I'm paying all this tuition, I've got them in Catholic school, my job is done. That is not the case. You know, that there's some amazing Catholic schools out there, and I'm not trying to bash Catholic schools, but in my experience, the experience, my husband went through Catholic school from the time he was in kindergarten all the way through when he got his degree in a Catholic university. That is not the experience that he had firsthand, that just being in a Catholic environment, Catholic school, Catholic university is going to provide you with what you need to sustain you in the faith. So just don't tap out because you have your kid in Catholic school and think, well, you know what, I'm done. I don't need to do anything more. You still do. As parents, we're the primary educator of our children. And I take that really seriously. And that means more to me than just making sure that they understand algebra or how to conjugate a verb or how to figure out something in an anatomy class. Those are all things that are important because I am their homeschool teacher. But what's really important to me is that they know Christ, they know his church, they know the sacraments, and they know that everything in their life, if funneled through the church, is going to lead them to Christ. And that's what's going to sustain them in life because the hard times are always going to come. But if you don't give them the foundation, that's how they get lured away. That's how somebody who's you know, really quick with the way that they speak, they can tell them Bible verses and rattle them off. They'll lure them away. If you do not set the foundation for your child and they can't defend the faith, someone will pull them out. We see it happen all the time. So what are ways that you can make your children understand being Catholic? What does it mean? It's more than just saying, yeah, I'm Catholic. Okay, I'm Italian, I'm Catholic, I'm from here, I'm from there, whatever. No, it has to be personal to them. They have to understand the why behind what it is we're doing. You gotta get to Mass every Sunday. Every Holy Day of Obligation, get there together as a family. We travel an hour and a half each way to get to the Latin Mass. That's what our family needed to be able to really be invested in the faith because we were seeing so many abuses on the Novus Ordo, the, the mass that everyone is very familiar with. And it was really causing a lot of stress. And we, so we did something about it. So if you have to travel to get to a reverent, holy mass, do it. Your family is worth it. Because we travel so far, we need to fill the time. Now we can listen to music or talk or just everybody be on their phones, but my husband has made a point of making sure that we use that time that we're together, where we're all kind of confined in the vehicle, getting to mass, that we are trying to learn more about the faith. And we've done that through Lighthouse Catholic Media. They have CDs, and maybe you've seen like a kiosk at your parish where you can get different CDs on different talks. We've done that. We've listened to Catholic Answers podcast. That is an invaluable resource. If you are unfamiliar, I'm going to link them down below in my description. Their website, catholic.com, or their podcast, Catholic Answers Podcast. You will find so much information. And it's not just for Catholics. So maybe you're watching my video and you're not a Catholic. Maybe you're a Protestant, whatever, and you're interested. Why do Catholics do what they do? Go to Catholic Answers. Type in anything that you want to know about the Catholic Church, and I guarantee you there's an answer there from an apologist. And a lot of the apologists there were former Protestants. So they can quote Bible verses to you all day long. And they, can, they are incredible people. So check that out. So we'll listen to a podcast, you know, on the way up and the way back to Mass. We have discussions. We talk about the things. We talk about the faith. The faith is real to us. So we talk about saints. My kids each have a saint that they have a personal devotion to. My husband does as well. On their feast day, we celebrate those days. It's almost like, kind of like a family birthday in our house. We make a cake for them, we'll watch a video for them. Yesterday was St. Gianna's feast day and that's my daughter Gabrielle's patron saint. 
So we celebrated St. Gianna. We went to mass, we lit a candle for her, we made a cake for her, we had a special dinner, we watched a video, we did a prayer for her, and we asked for her prayers after we concluded our nightly rosary. We make the faith real. When my children were younger, we used to use Defend the Faith um, apologetics cards, where it's kind of, you know, if somebody says this to you, what is the response? Why do Catholics have more books in the Bible than Protestants do? How would you defend that? Why do Catholics pray to Mary? Why do Catholics worship statues or any of the other ridiculous things that people try to pin on us? And if a Catholic doesn't know those answers and you get a fast-talking Protestant to confront them, sometimes they buckle and they don't know what to say. And then they start doubting. And then, well, well, maybe they are right. And maybe I don't know. And that's where you as a parent come in. If you do your job and you teach your children the things that they need to know to defend themselves, to defend the faith, when they get out into the real world, your kids are going to stay Catholic. It's not about listening to contemporary music and mass that's going to keep them Catholic. It's not sending them to Life Teen that's going to keep them Catholic. I've got four kids, and I will tell you, none of that is what's going to sustain my children in the faith. Pray the rosary together, but more than that, explain to them why why we're doing it, what it's for, the beauty of it. Consecrate your family to Our Lady. Ask for her help to keep them rooted in the faith. At Easter and also at Advent, we do special devotions together as a family. We just did the Divine Mercy Chaplet as a family. We did for Easter, we did Padre Pio's devotional. At Advent, we do a different one. My husband will lead us in the devotional that we're doing for that time. We watch videos, we'll watch movies about different saints, their lives, St. Padre Pio, St. Gianna, we did um, St. Faustina. So different people that are heroes in the church that we can look to for inspiration. Those are all important things to make the faith real to your child. Explain to them how to act in mass. Let them see that it's a holy place. Why do we bless ourselves with holy water? Why do we genuflect when we come before the tabernacle? Why do we receive Christ in a worthily state and we can't if we need to get to confession? Prioritize the sacraments. Confession should be a regular part of your family's story. We go to the Latin Mass and we are so blessed that we have the Sacrament of Reconciliation offered to us before every Mass. Most Catholic parishes will have it available to you every single Saturday. Get there. Talk to your children. If they're young, maybe they're not going to know to ask to go. Make this a conversation. It's important that they see the faith lived out through us. It cannot just be something that a teacher in Catholic school is giving to them for 30 minutes to an hour a day. It has to be with you. I really hope that some of these things that we've talked about today will be a help to you on how you can do different things to keep your cradle Catholic child in the faith. It's easy when they're little. It gets harder and harder as the years go on and there's more things tugging at your child, trying to pull them away. Let them see the example through you. Let them understand how important it is to stay rooted in the church, close to Christ. That is what's gonna sustain them in life. Not the music not the retreats, none of that. It's not gonna matter. They need to see it through you. Pray together, pray the rosary together. Celebrate the feast days. Talk about what happens at the mass. Explain to them the beauty of what is happening. The representation of what happened at Calvary. We need to make the faith real to them. And you're their primary teacher. Do something for your child that's going to sustain them long after you're gone. God love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this video. I hope if you like this kind of content, you like my video, leave me a comment below. Let me know, are you a cradle Catholic? What's something that you're doing in your home to bring your child up through the faith, to make it real to them? Please hit the um, notification bell so you'll know when my next video will come up. And also, don't forget, check out the videos that I'm linking below of the other ladies, the other Catholic YouTubers, and their video and their take on how to raise a cradle Catholic child. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. God bless.
Peace.